first things first, if you're getting a puppy, if you maybe even if you've just gotten a puppy um, and you want to know, like, what's the best way to, uh, you know, have, have everything that I'm going to need. Um, we'll talk about some of the basic stuff that you're going to need. Uh, some of the things that are just going to make your life so much easier. I mean, it's, you it know makes a big difference. I feel like that like even talking about the shopping list brings back like so many exciting positive association oh, okay. memories See guys, i've been chipping away at her to get a puppy uh, in for so not long not that i want it's a puppy working. It's working. but like we have so much dog stuff guys like i would be embarrassed to admit to you the amount of dog stuff that we've accumulated over the years but whenever we get a new puppy i always get all new brand stuff and brand new stuff because the puppy has to have their own things of Absolutely. course um so definitely some of the things that we're going to go over with our shopping list i i get very excited about getting the collar specifically what it looks like what the col puppy's color is going to be i'm a little insane what can i say uh i mean she said you it. don't don't even <laughs> not me okay so let's talk about those things let's let's um talk about the things that we think are really we know are really important to help uh you guys at home with with your puppies yeah so we have a couple things uh, listed down here um a collar um when you get a collar obviously when they're puppies you can just probably get a puppy collar but one of the things that we recommend as they get older is to switch out the snap uh collars for a buckle we see so many students and we've had a lot of uh, people who have those snap collars although they're very convenient for sure um but they break a little bit more easily and we've also actually had a couple people when they've reached in to grab the hauler collar or hook the leash on the snap has like right. caught and yeah. broken open we talk um, about this accidentally. quite often actually mm -hmm. we talk about uh, with puppy owners and as those dogs get bigger uh, you never know like i can think of one very specific incident that happened not that long ago to a friend uh where their dog was uh standing on the edge of uh you know they jumped up onto like a, an mm -hmm. edge went over luckily the dog was wearing metal buckle hardware like had a you know metal yeah. clip on the collar and it didn't break. yeah a leash or a house line and the word house line always gets people they're thinking what on earth is a house line so when we have a puppy we have several leashes we have a leash that we train our dogs with we have a house line which is basically a fancy word for a leash with no handle that is old and crappy and can be sort of um, dragged around the house and slips and slides everywhere and then the third thing that we have is a long line so a long 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 leash like 20 30 feet that our puppies wear when they're outside so that they can have a little bit more freedom but without sacrificing their safety of course um, a crate obviously um, and if you want a dog training tip we have several crates for our puppies or if we have the ones that have a little handle we can kind of move it around because we like to keep the puppy's crate close to us when we're using it whether it's when we're sleeping when we're you know hanging out on the couch or whatever because we we don't have our puppies out of the crate all day long and all night long we have them in and out so we really like to have either multiple crates or we have Mo mobile crates that we can move around so the puppy can stay with us. We train our puppies a lot when they're young to go and lie down on a bed and we make that very, very valuable. We almost train it like a trick. One thing that we do not do though uh, with some puppies is we don't put a bed in their crate, which shocks people sometimes. They think, oh, how horrible. Just from the, our experience, we find a lot of dogs are more prone to either chewing it or having accidents on it when they're young. So once their house training's done and they're sort of, they're not really chewing, then you can put a bed in there for sure. But just just be careful about it when they're young sometimes it can be do more damage than good um, some type of interactive toy so a tug toy or something that you can play with your dog um, and what we mean by um, interactive toy is that this is something that we would play with our dogs and then when we weren't using it we would tuck it away so our pup couldn't have access to it right. this does a couple things number one it's safe because usually if you let them you know chew on a stuffed animal or rope toy or things like that they're going to destroy it which could be potentially be dangerous to them but the other thing that people don't realize that it does if you save the toy is it builds crazy toy drive. So it teach the, teaches them to be more excited about the toy because when it comes out, it's a special moment that you guys have together and then you put it away. So it helps really build the drive. Um, obviously, you're going to need lots and lots of treats because we're going to do tons of training using treats. You'll have to sort of figure out what your puppy likes best. We have all kinds of recommendations. Actually, Dan, I wonder if you could share um, our tuna treat um, recipe 
we have one that we yeah. uh, we just swear by and our students swear by as well it's really easy to make and the puppies love it it's quite gentle on their tummies as well and then last thing obviously is going to be their food you know whether you're doing kibble or raw or whatever you're doing you need to have a bit of a game plan with what you're feeding and your feeding schedule as well so let's jump into some of these questions if this is your first time on the train station uh what we do is we basically we have a bit of a lesson plan for you guys then we'll jump into the chat and uh if a question comes to mind go ahead, feel free to ask it and i'll try to catch as many as i can it's really difficult with um the uh, how many questions are coming in but i'll try to capture some so uh aaron Mick says, how do you know what size collar to buy for a puppy mm. even before you have them home? That's a great question and probably something yeah. that a lot of puppy owners would want. Yeah, um, what we usually do uh, with our puppies is we buy adjustable collars that can kind of open and close. And the biggest thing that I focus on when I have a baby puppy is the width of the collar. So you want to make sure that it's wide enough that it's going to be fairly comfortable. I think that often when people buy collars, they end up buying um, collars that are too skinny. They're like almost like cat collars. Obviously, if you have a tiny breed then that's not going to matter but sometimes I see like labs and goldens with like these tiny little skinny collars um, and that's actually not super comfortable for the dog and it's not really effective for training so um, the best collar that you could get would be is a thick collar but that fits snugly around their neck so we usually put two fingers between our um, between the collar and their neck to ensure that it's not too loose it could slide over their head and of course not too tight and when you have a baby puppy they are growing like a weed so we literally Literally check the, the collars every single day to ensure that they're fit properly and they're they're doing well. Um, Douglas asks, why do you not recommend a harness? And he's from Fredericksburg, Virginia. So Fred uh, uh, Douglas, this is something that we uh, often talk about. We uh, all of our well, not all, but m most of our dogs do wear a harness. Yeah. After they've learned how to walk on a loose leash, we know that um, because we, uh, you know, we focus on starting with something like a flat buckle collar, um, we want to be able to have control of the dog's head, give them really good information. And the best way for your dog to quickly learn, more quickly learn about loose leash, you know, uh, as well as to redirect them if you need to, is by having that a little bit more head control. And something yeah. like a collar uh, that sits up nice and high on your dog's neck is the best way to do that. Rather than being dependent on a piece of equipment like a harness that might have some sort of like mechanism or uh, you know a way of stopping them from pulling yeah. you don't want to become dependent on something like that you want to train your dog to learn to listen yeah. to, to want to be in that position. I've done a lot of research on harnesses because they're really popular in the dog sport world and for every world team I've been on they always give us like a Team Canada harness and it's super fancy and amazing um, but there's certain like sometimes they, the way that they fit on the dog's body can actually be hard on their um, movement um, and also the dogs can pull on it really easily so if you have a dog that's in training and you're dealing with the dog pulling um, they can really lean into it and although it distributes the weight and maybe makes it a little bit easier on you it's not good for teaching the walking or things like that so we um, try to work it first and then we switch to it um we switch to a harness later if if we want to mine basically are because they look cool not because they're actually <laughs> changing the dog's behavior right. yeah <laughs> Okay, so we need to talk about the next things that you're going to be needed. You'll, you'll need to be thinking about for your puppy training, and that's collar and the house line. Now mm -hmm. we talked a little bit about why you'd want it, but we really need to think about the application of these things. Number one, um, a lot of people say oh, I put a, a collar on my puppy and he hates it, um, but I want you to think of it like a new pair of glasses. <laughs> when you first put, the, and I, we have some adorable videos of our youngest dog Beeline when she was a little tiny puppy, and we put a collar on her, her new collar on her, and she's constantly scratching at it and fussing with it. I think to it's get cute. It. Very cute. <laughs> but it's like wearing a new pair of glasses. It's something new. They're just sort of getting used to it. But it's really, really important that your puppy has a collar so that you're able to take control if you need to. And they're, it's going to mm -hmm. be something that they wear. So getting them used to it early is a really, really good step in the right direction. The other thing is a house line. And it is so important for you to have good timing when you're puppy training. That's why a house line um, is the perfect way to, to I'm gonna deal with that. I'm going to go get a house line so we can show them. One of the important things that you want to focus on when you're doing all of your puppy training training is supervision, right? We talk about that quite often. And if you've been here in the train station before, you'll know all of the reasons that supervision is so important. But even with good supervision, if you have poor control or it's a challenge for you to be able to do something like stop your puppy from eating something or, you know, stop them from, uh, you know, running away or whatever the thing is, um, you really want to have better control. That's where a line is going to come in handy. L allowing your puppy to drag like a six foot line yeah, can be so really, really helpful. This is just sort of like a light, it's sort of a, a nylon-y um, material. And then I don't know if you can see. There we go there. Um, 
that, but we've just cut the end of the handle off. Uh, we've cut the handle off the end, would be better English. Um, and that's just I to... It's gooder uh, English. Gooder English. <laughs> uh, and this is just so it doesn't get caught on some um, so many things. Um, and I, I, I definitely don't want to um, pull the wool over your eyes with this one, but the long lines and the, the leashes, they're a pain in the butt sometimes. They get caught on the chair legs. They get, you know, wrapped around trees. They get caught on the dog's legs sometimes. They, they can be a pain in the butt. But for the amount of times that they save you and... And they allow you to get the, the puppy from out from underneath the bed when they have socks in your, their mouth or from, you know, jumping on the, the couch and attacking your house coat or whatever it is. The fact that you have something that you can grab that's not the physical puppy is unbelievably helpful in your leadership and your redirection and your ability to get rid of some of those on water behaviors. So we recommend that your puppy wears this. I'm sure Ken already says that, said this, but 100% of the time, all every when moment, our, when our puppies go in the crate, we clip the long line. I uh, come out of their crate. Yeah, when we go in the crate, we clip it to their uh, thing. When they come out, yeah. we hook it to their collar, and then that's what they boot around uh, the house with. My puppy doesn't want to move when I put on a leash. Yeah, uh, sometimes that happens. Sometimes it can be that they're like a little bit like taken back by it. Um, you might want to try uh, something that's lightweight to begin with. So you could maybe. Um, Oh, another one. Um, yeah, you could start with something that's lightweight and just sort of let them drag it around. It, it, initially, it's pretty surprising because the puppies aren't used to it, but it's, it very quickly becomes just sort of a, a fourth appendage there at the end to just get comfortable with it. Um, I don't know why I said that. Um, so uh, keep at it. Try something a little bit lighter. Or when you first put it on, get some treats out and encourage the dog to follow some food or maybe do some tricks. Do something that gets the dog off of the fact that they're wearing a line. Best way to correct uh, biting and nipping when not in the middle of training. Like right now, she's, she's trying to nip at my feet at the couch despite a Kong with treats in it. Uh, well, do you have a house line on? Do you have a line attached? Yep. And if that's the case, then you need to take the line and you need to prevent the puppy. So take the line and pull the puppy off of you and maybe get the puppy to sit, um, give the puppy another job to do, and then um, don't just go back to what you're doing. You know, encourage the puppy to go and lie down with a bone right. or if you find that you're wanting to focus on this and you don't want to pay attention to the puppy just go pop them in their crate for a moment uh, do it pleasantly of course you know address the biting and then happily put them in their crate but what a lot of people do is they correct and then they just sort of leave it alone and the dog goes back at it again and it's like this vicious cycle so you need to have the last say um also when you're on the couch and and uh, the puppy can sort of jump up you're sort of putting yourself in a more you're becoming an easy target basically so stand up even when you need to address the puppy stand up and take the leash and, and um, pull the puppy off um, so that you look a little bit more like you have some authority for sure yeah Kristen we do know that I do know that you're a student I, I don't Brett, Brett isn't a student though okay. I'm gonna jump to Brett's question Brett says our mini Aussie Onyx listening uh, started listening much better when we got more consistent with the house line mm -hmm. the last two weeks have been amazing and it, that's the kind of thing Brett I love the fact that you're following through you're really following up on uh, you know uh, taking some of the, the uh, advice and, and things that we uh, share here on the YouTube channel, especially here in the live stream, another super chat. <laughs> yeah, so talking about the collar and line, uh, for those of you who have a puppy who might be, so uh, Dana was one of the people that mentioned this, my dog chews on the house line all the time, and Linda said, I used, I used a house line until she chewed it off one day. Was I imagine she means wasn't very helpful. So this is this is a critical part of using that house line, guys. Now, oh, anytime your puppy's uh, coming out of their crate, you're putting that house line on and you are supervising them. You are focused on what your puppy is up to. They can't sneak away mm -hmm. and start to chew on that line. And if they do, you're going to mark that. Ah, ah, hey, oops, whatever the yeah, thing hey, is. Hey, leave that. Yeah, you know, mark that use moment. Use your voice. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, because if, you know when pe people say, oh, they chewed it off. Well, how, how were they chewing it long enough to chew it off without you seeing? So that's a supervision issue. That's not really a puppy issue. So you yeah. really need to be watching the puppies. The moment my puppies start to chew on the line, I you know use my voice to scold them a little bit. Ah, ah, leave that. Leave it. Or hey, or something that sort of says I don't like that. And then I'll walk over and I'll remove the the line from them. And and if they continue to do it, then I'll address that and I'll, I'll do a little bit of discipline with them. And then I'll redirect them to something that they should do. I'll show them their bone or something else. Um, you just have to keep at it. Consistency, you know, if your timing's good and you're um, clear with what your expectations are, you only have to tell the puppy a couple times and it will be 
it will be over and done with. I can't I literally smile. can't keep I can't up right now. Smile. Yeah, because like <laughs> it, it is it, the train station is uh, rocking and rolling, and uh, the lights are flashing. It's uh, really cool. And thank you guys for your super chats. We certainly appreciate them. Now, Paul F. Um, asks, uh, do you create your dogs when you're not training or walking? Paul, uh, it depends if I, if I can't. So basically the division is, or, or the, um, the threshold for time for the crate is, can I supervise the puppy? Can I be 100% eyes on that puppy? It's also a great opportunity to bring your puppy out of the crate and they directly interact with you. Then you can go out and do some training, tire them out a little bit, whether it's walking or whatever the exercise is. And then you can, you know, they finish doing their, their thing outside. Then they can go back into their crate because they're going to need somewhere to rest. A crate mm-hmm. is such a valuable tool because number one, it's your dog's own space. You know, it gives them an opportunity to be away from the rest of the family. And maybe if you have another dog, it gives them some separation from that. But it's also like a safe, comfortable place that mm-hmm. only good things happen. That, that It's like, the you know, uh, they really find or feel it's such a safe comfortable place and that crate can go around with you as you travel mm-hmm. as you move around around the house really really uh, beneficial but the the best part is that way your puppy only gets good information remember puppies are learning all the time mm-hmm. whether you're there to train them or not they're, they're figuring things out they're exploring the world but it's crucial that they're getting good information because they'll just do whatever's rewarding. You know, you're probably just gonna do whatever feels good. Yeah. So you want to make sure that that feels good comes from you. I think what's really important to know is our, our focus is really directed on puppies or young dog training right now. Um, but remember the house line, the crate, all of these things are what we deem as tools. They're things that we use to help train the dog. But once the, these things are accomplished, you might not need to use a crate anymore unless right. you want to. You so don't important. need to have a line or leash. Our dogs go outside with no line or leash on whatsoever. Right. They listen to our voices. Yeah. Um, we have dogs that never go in crates anymore. We have um, some dogs that go in crates at nighttime because they're irritating to sleep with. We have dogs that, you know, so we just move it around all of the time. Uh, but your, your goal is to wean off of these things. Right now, these are training tools to make sure that what they learn first, they learn properly so you don't have to go back and fix things and fill holes later on. Now you've just watched some content from our main channel, McCann Dog Training. And if you'd like some more training information on this topic, click that card right there. If this is your first time on our Clips channel and you really enjoy the short form content, make sure you subscribe. Hit that button right there. On that note, I'm Ken. Happy training.